Hello and welcome to Daily Politics, reaching you from Trust TV here in Abuja. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. My name is Suleiman Suleiman. The race for the presidential office is gathering momentum. The primary elections are in motion proper across all the major parties. Nomination forms are on sale in both the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, and the Opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP. The same applies for other parties. Also, the primary election calendar is now on, and many politicians are, well, running from here, there, building bridges for themselves, and also trying to burn down the bridges of others. You know, the APC will hold its presidential primary election convention from May 30th to June 1st, just a few days after the PDP will have concluded its own presidential primary on May 29th. All of this means that all across the country, politicians are going this way and that, trying to make friends, but also making enemies and along the way. For the APC in particular, the imagined picture of the, of the shape of things to come has now gone beyond the realm of speculation. From the array of the aspirants angling to fly its presidential flag in 2003, we can say that the ruling party is leaving nothing to chance in its efforts to secure another round of four years from Nigerians. So tonight we ask, how is the presidential race in the APC shaping up so far? Which candidate will be declared flag bearer of the party come June 1st? And does younger candidates in the party stand a chance? With me in the studio to discuss these issues is one of these younger candidates. Malam Adamu Garba II, he's the presidential candidate in the APC. Before, joining, before then, he was and still is the chief executive officer of IPI, a technology company. You're most welcome to Daily Politics. Thank you very much, Dr. Slim. We'll take a minute. When we return, we'll go straight into it and bring you insight of what it means to be a presidential aspirant in the APC and what it means to emerge as presidential candidate. As I know, Marlon Nadimogarba will be wishing. Stay with us. This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV, and we're discussing the APC presidential race, well, with one of those in the race, Marlon Ademugarba II. So but, but maybe we, we, we go straight <clears throat> into it. The, the current president, you know, President Muhammad Buhari, has a larger-than-life statue, at least within the party. You know, it's one of the major... Uh, people that formed the party. He emerged the first presidential candidate of the party, the first president of the APC to, uh, uh, to win two elections ba 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 back to back, and also widely popular among at least some sections of the, the, the APC uh, voters or APC faithfuls. So how, you know, you and your colleagues that are aspiring, how are you looking to replace uh, such a person in the APC? Um, I think, uh, uh, thank you for having me, Dr. Suleiman. Mm. I think this is constitutional. Okay. No matter how large, mm. how established a presidential uh, president is in a country, thank God to democracy, you only have um, a period of four years, an additional four years. Mm. And that uh, it's clear that by May 29, 2023, Nigeria is going to have a new president. Mm. Whether that new president is going to assume the larger than life by a possible kind of personality or not, mm. that's left to be seen. Mm. But we hope, mm. as Nigerians do, that that president should be Adam Ugarba. Mm. Thank you. Uh, but it, it will be interesting to, to, to if that, pro uh, that president becomes uh, uh, Adam Ugarba. But one of the issues we, 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 we uh, Nigerians are looking at is the issue of preparation for office mm. across the board, 
across the major political parties, across the smaller political parties, yes. but also across the offices as well, you know, presidential, governorship, uh, senatorial, and, 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 and so on. There's this general argument that our presidents particularly have not always been prepared for office. Mm. So it goes without saying, are you prepared to be president of Nigeria? 100%. I think if there is any university and PhD mm. um, studies, I think mine will have to be on Nigeria. Mm. Because I dedicated my life from 2003, mm. and those students that were with me in the university then, mm. they knew that I was talking about wanting to be the president in 2019, mm. as at that moment in 2003. In fact, it even cost me my university education because I was so much into it mm. to the point whereby I study extensively about how to build a country, like mm. in the, our peculiarities, Nigeria. And over the period of 17 years, I was able to study clear, critically about 146 different countries. Mm. From these 146 different countries, you will see the rise of other countries over time mm. and the fall of others. And what are the policy choices that make those other ones that stayed afloat as I have adopted, mm -hmm. and what are the policy, wrong policy choices that the ones that have failed have adopted? Mm -hmm. And how can we avoid those wrong policy choices and apply mm -hmm. the right policy You're choices? You're telling me that in the last 20 years, mm -hmm. since 2003, 2003, you know, 19 years to yes, date, yes. you have actually been training yourself and preparing to become president of Nigeria? That's very Tell very Nigerians important. more. Yes, you see, the thing is, I also, in the course of this preparation, I had a course to study the history of this country from 11th century. Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, long time ago, you know, since when we were Sudan land, uh, down to the point when we are part of Ghana Empire, to Mali Empire, to Songhai, mm -hmm. down to the coming of the Moors, to scatter Songhai, and then we build the Sultanate of Namfodio, mm -hmm. and all the major kingdoms we have, Kororofa, Daura, mm -hmm. you know, Oyonle, Kalabari, and all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. and. I came to understand that as we come into the 20th century, precisely 1901, mm -hmm. when Lord Lugat assumed the responsibility, there is a particular strategic objective that you want to achieve. And that strategic objective is not so much about power, but to organize the country for extraction of economic resources as much as possible. Mm -hmm. It means that the biggest value that the country has have to do with the economy. But as we run down towards the independence, when we have the crisis in Suez in 1956 that forced the Americans to ask all the colonial powers to vacate Africa, mm. we succeeded too in getting our independence. That's why you see so many African countries got independent around that period of 1960. Mm. So when we got our own, the independence now banked on the political power, mm. not economic power. Most of the actors as at then, the, two, the three major regional actors mm -hmm. were all aiming for political control as opposed to economic pro of production. Mm -hmm. And immediately we took over, we began to decentralize because at the point when we got independent, we are three regions, politically polarized units. And from there, that did not go well to the point whereby all our founding fathers were murdered and we now had a long war, about three years war, Biafra. From there, we now shift into a little bit of a 70s stability. Then in the 80s, we now get into crisis again. Maitasine, then Kafanchan crisis. In the 90s, we now began to have mm -hmm. a little bit of um, Zangwan Kataf crisis again, religious crisis, especially in the north. Then we have Niger Delta militancy. When we come to 1999, PO, uh, OPC picked up, you know, in the west. Mm -hmm. And you have Zaki BM, you have Odi. Mm -hmm. That's how we keep navigating around crisis and killing. Mm -hmm. Then we got to Boko Haram, militancy again banditry now, mm. you know, and kidnapping that is ravaging the West. So when you look mm. at this, there's something that is talking about the foundational establishment of Nigeria. Over time, Nigeria has paid so much attention to politics as opposed to the economics. Okay. Meanwhile, what's supposed to be the main uniting factor within the country is supposed to be the economic integration mm. as opposed to the political integration. Mm. And that is why my coming to aspire for the office of the presidency is mm. banking or bringing a vision. Mm. that will replace experience. That experience is politicization experience that we have had over time mm. by replacing it with a vision mm. that will see to abolishing these geopolitical zones to transforming it into geoeconomic zones and mm. expanding it to nine geoeconomic zones. Whereby we pay serious attention to the economic of production. We accept each other for who we are, mm. an Igbo man for Igbo man, Hausa for Hausa, Fulani for Fulani, Yoruba for Yoruba, Nupe for all the tribes, mm. accepting them for who they are based on their sincere identities mm. by paying 
paying attention to economic link that seems to bridge the gap between one another. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly the vision that we are bringing for to the, for to the fore. If you look at Nigeria today, 99% of all the operations that we operate in the area of insecurity that we are facing today mm -hmm. has to do with the politics of the country. So when we articulate all those things, we came up with two agenda that we believe can fix Nigeria. And these two agenda are going to be collapsed into a council. We have council for security mm. and so political I, I, affairs. I will, I, will, I will be taking mm. you up on these issues uh, uh, later on, particularly yes. on the economy, yeah. and then certainly on the security. Yes. What are you going to do different? You yeah. know, but we'll come to that. First of all, let, 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 let's talk about the wider politics of how we are going to get there. <laughs> yes, in, in, that's in, very correct. You know, in, 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 in the first place, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the, the general trend among most people is uh, uh, vying for presidency, you know, either, uh, but, but, you know, is to go for other political parties, you mm. know, when young people, maybe smaller political parties or the alternative political, but you are a presidential aspirant in the APC, you know, how, for how long have you been an APC member and how can you measure your chances against other people you are contesting, you know, against like uh, people like uh, Shiwaju, Bola, Matunubu, uh, the Vice President, Yemi Osimbajo, and so on and so forth. Yes, I have been in APC since 2015, okay. 2014, 2015. That's how I joined um, APC. And why I major into the um, bigger political platforms mm -hmm. has to do with our history again. Mm -hmm. Because I am those kind of person that believe in historical antecedents of everything. And if you check Nigeria's history from the independence, and now we used to operate a two-party system. You know, from the time of uh, our founding fathers to the Second Republic of Sheu Shagari mm. to the Third Republic of IBBS, DPNRC, mm. to now we have PDP, AMPP, then APP, AMPP, then PDP, you know, APC. So this is the structure that we have. So why do we have to go out to build something when we can really concentrate forces within this major political platform mm. while we have holding an experience that mm. other people can learn over time to build capacity, mm. we also reform the system. Okay. So that's why I belong to, to APC. Mm. And what are my chances despite yes. the bigger gladiators in the game? My simple chances is that I know when you are in a political uh, party, your biggest agenda is to win political power. Absolutely. If you don't have political power, you are nothing. Absolutely. We have seen how PDP went into this array mm. simply because of lack of political power. And APC have a better chance of winning the 2023 election by presenting my candidacy. Mm. One, I appeal to the demography that is feeling excluded from the system, the younger demography. Okay. Two, I'm coming with a vision not leveraging of the experiences of the past that have failed mm. over time. Every time we apply experience in this country, we just have a quagmire. Mm. And there is evidently clear that the system is designed in mm. such a way that however you want to come to it inside it, it will collapse you. So you have to come from outside the system with a new program that mm. will re-engineer the system mm. and transform it for a new direction, especially in this 21st century model. Mm. And that's the program we built over time. Mm. So with this, the party have a very good manifesto to sell to Nigerians. The party also have a younger demography, an energetic, um, visionary person that when they place in front of Nigerian populace, they are going to get a win. Thank you. So that's so my people chance. are saying that you, you know you're, you're you're invoking your youth. Yes. You're invoking a different kind of experience, separate yes. from what we are used to to having. Because if experience gets us where, then of what value? Is it, if all the experience in the world has brought Nigeria to what it is, then of what value it is. That's so true. I can agree with that. But <clears throat> people have said that the young people, when they come into politics, when they're being given opportunities, if they don't prove to be worse than those they seek to succeed, they tend not to be better. People give examples of many, including uh, uh, your core. Uh, aspirant, uh, Governor Yabelo of, of Kogi State. People mm. give examples that youth, they haven't really done anything extraordinary when they have gotten uh, chances. So how are you going to convince first your party members and maybe later on, uh, or let me say hopefully later on, uh, other Nigerians that you're going to be different? It is clear 
if you look at the commitment over these 17, 19 years mm. that I have invested, it means there is deliberate effort to do the right thing. Okay. And that is why each and every policy points that we adopted are based on practicable, workable framework. Mm. It's not something that is cut in stone. Mm. So exuberance is out of it. And again, mm. if you look at me uh, as a personality mm. now deeply, I started my life four years old El Majiri boy, mm. like a typical northern boy on mm. the street. Got circumcised at the age of seven, mm. started my primary school at the age of eight, you know. And from there, there is practically no street trade that I didn't do. We sold Raptor, mm. we sold Granote, we sold uh, Accra, mm. you know, in my house because I grew up in a very, very humble background. Mm. And that is how Johnny took me to life. I finished public primary school. Mm -hmm. I went to public secondary school. I went to public state university in Kano. Mm -hmm. And when I, at the middle, it was truncated. I shifted back into technology, learned IT, went to Lagos, knowing nobody mm -hmm. in Lagos. And from there, I started working in smaller organizations. I think my first salary was 10,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. I committed so much to the point where by the following month, they increased it to 30,000, then to 45,000. Then I got another job somewhere mm -hmm. that is even paying me 100,000. I rose to about 214,000 before coming back mm -hmm. and setting up my business. Mm -hmm. And I set up my business in 2008 in Lagos with only 52,000 Naira in my pocket then. Mm -hmm. In fact, at some point, I have to trek from where I was staying in Suruleri mm -hmm. to 1004 and come back for five days because I don't have transport money and I'm determined that mm -hmm. the business will work. Over this period of time, this company has grown to be five different companies, mm -hmm. employing 103 different staffs mm -hmm. and running uh, different places. We have office, our head office is Lagos, we have corporate office here in Abuja, mm -hmm. and we have offices in Yola. I think we have one in Jimeta, one that, in Mubi. That's commendable, so when you but look how at does this, that, because it, during the 2016 yes. elections, yes. The, uh, uh, the presidential candidate of the Democrats, uh, yes. Hillary Clinton, mm. she said that the skills to run a business are not exactly or directly transferable to the skills running a country. Mm. And you're now saying that your experience in establishing your own business, mm. which is commendable, certainly, mm. you know, in a country where uh, uh, you, enterprise is, is, is difficult, mm. but how does that transfer to being able to lead a country, especially a country such as complex and diverse as ours. As Nigeria, that's yeah. it. So if you look at the business angle, like my own personal business angle, mm. this is like a personal example, right? You also go back to my extensive study about state crafts, okay. different models of state craft globally that has worked. Mm. It means that I have deliberately committed to knowing how mm. to actually run a country. Mm. It's a completely different thing because I had time and I had the energy and mm. the, so I used to study extensively. Mm. In fact, I even fine tuned some pointers. I am I subscribed to different think tanks in the world, mm. attend different programs. Mm. Just I want to understand how can Nigeria be better. Mm. And I came to discover that this country is fundamentally placed strategically to the point whereby there is no reason why a Nigerian man can be poor, provided the right policy choices are employed in running the affairs of the state. So these are what we articulated in this our agenda for the presidency. They are all workable, all practical. Thank you. So that is why I believe we can run the country properly. So the, the first challenge is to sell in that idea to 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 your party faithfuls. Yes. To the particularly the seven thousand eight hundred delegates that are going to be there on May thirty first to June first in your uh, uh, presidential uh, primary convention. So how what efforts have you been making towards this? Because that's one of the uh, uh, questions people are uh, are saying. Yes. That all these young people. You say you want opportunities to be in politics, but you spend the bulk of your time on Facebook, on yes. Twitter, and, and, yes. and so on. You're not actually on ground, you know, yes. where the real Nigerians actually yes. live, where yes. the real voters actually live. Mm. So how are you getting to connect first to your party people, you know, across the country? You see, the structure of Nigerian politics is, mm. is a chain. So if you want to play politics at the local level, you can now play politics at the local level. Mm. If you want to play at the state level, mm. you now play politics at the state level and you don't need to interfere in the politics of the local level. For instance, if I go to meet my uh, uh, delegate in, a, in my ward, mm. 
and start talking to him without asking my ward chairman to talk to him. Mm -hmm. I am bypassing my ward chairman, and the ward chairman will not be happy. Mm -hmm. Similarly, since if I'm playing at the state level and I want to read the delegate in my state, it's the chairman of my state that I need to talk to, not the delegate. He will be the one to suggest how it is done. Mm -hmm. If you are playing at the national politics level, you have to work with the network of this chain to reach out to the delegate. You don't bypass them to say, I want to talk to the delegate one on one. Mm -hmm. It's like you are trying to show that what the effort they have invested so much time to build this delegate over time is rubbish that you are trying to right. take away you know their own political value away from them so the best solution is to talk to the key stakeholders they know how to handle their delegates yeah. i had a course to collect the list of all the delegates 7800 and i began to even place call to some of the key stakeholders in those countries especially statutory delegates in those in those states and what I do is just to familiarize myself. My name is Adam Garba. I'm also aspiring for this office. I said, let me come and wish you uh, iftar, this, 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 and just to greet you, to just familiarize myself, and thank you very much. I have spoken with your political leader, so, so, so person, and inshallah, you hear from me, uh, from, from him, um, through me on any of the discussions we have. Clearly, trying to show you that I'm just establishing another relationship, but it has nothing to do with politicking. But um, suppose, in a way, some people that are outside the political system, they told you have to go and be talking to each of these seven. You don't do that. If you do that, it's like you're shutting down their boss. Because it's arranged in such a, it's a kind of a stockbroking setting. Mm. But some people will say that, that that's a system that entrenches and promotes corruption in the internal. Uh, a party because the individual delegate has yes. their own mind yes and they have one vote their boss will have one bo vote yes. Ob yes. ultimately yes you know and because they have their own mind they can make their decision of which candidate they would prefer yes when the election comes yes. you know so if delegates are being targeted by a handful of super delegates mm. if i may use the term <laughs> you know, yes. then it means that you know they can easily be bought off yes the That's, thing is mm. the, the truth of the matter is i think the person that try as much as possible to see that he created a level playing field for each delegate in this country is president muhammad Ubari. Okay. and he has seen very clearly in 2019 uh, 2015 mm. the way it felt and in 2019 when he was fully in charge of the party he also saw in the way it went. That is why in 2023 he created a whole new arrangement where governors are the principal leaders of all the political assets in their own states. Okay. So it means that governors now have strategy. They produce the NWC members in their state by signing with red pen to indicate that this is our agreement. Mm. And of course, the same NWC members and the governors now have the control of the delegates. Mm. Delegate system is not altogether a bad thing. It is the ideology of the party that needs reshaping to be able to organize um, the, um, the institution so that people can be accessed based on their individual convictions, one ideological inclination. Yeah. Supposing your super delegate has an ideology to the left and the candidate that is presenting to you, you know, is a candidate to the left, all of you in that area that, in, that are inclined towards the left will just follow mm. the super delegate who is inclining towards the left to lead you mm. to that particular candidate. It's not altogether a bad thing because human society have to be hierarchical, pyramidal, mm. for you to be able to have structure and control. Mm. But the situation whereby you have to horizontalize, mm. you want to talk to Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, all of them, you are just shutting down them. Um, some super delegates. So this is this is the fact about our democracy as it is now, and whether we like it or not, we have to somehow, as political realists, respect the supremacy, like pseudo supremacy, of these super delegates to be able to reach out to the major mm. delegates. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. So, but, but while you're trying to reach out, because there was um, uh, news around you a few yes. days ago regarding the cost of the the presidential nomination forms. Yes but also not uh, um, nomination forms for the president, but that of governors, even member House of Representatives in the APC is, 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 is 10 million. That's correct. And um, member State House of Assembly, which is about the entry point where most people will first give a shot at elective office in the country, you know, is 2 million, mm. you know, and in the kind of economy that we have, not many people have that enough to be able to buy buy forms. So the first question is, is the APC trying to sell elective offices in Nigeria? Is your party, are they trying to sell offices? 
I want to see it as that, personally, as also a party member. And I believe it's not uh, a deliberate effort to sell the office. Mm. It's a kind of a deliberate effort to reduce crowd in aspiring to those offices, mm. but a very wrong priority. The better priority should be that w present candidate that offers solutions to the problems. Mm. That is why in democracies that are mature, like that of United States and mm. different countries, you find out that at the beginning of the contest, there are like it's 20 different, uh, you know, mm. so it is the conviction, the, uh, the, their deliverability, their objectives, and the level of conviction that they have on the general public that will keep shrinking the numbers until you reach the absolute minimum mm. that you believe when you present them to general public, you win election, mm. that's when you now go into primary elections. So you have to filter based on competency and capacity to deliver. Mm -hmm. But the situation whereby you financialize an office, mm -hmm. you are incentivized even criminals mm -hmm. from participating in the political affairs. Mm -hmm. It means if I happen to be a bandit or a kidnapper and I mm -hmm. kidnap 20 people and ask for money for ransom, mm -hmm. I can be able to come and buy the form because it's only money that is the, the, the valid uh, uh, means for you to acquire the office. Mm -hmm. If I am a Yahoo boy or an official bandit, because there are some people that are working in our offices, but they are bandits too, they steal. Mm -hmm. So I can steal money because I know that if I use it, I can be able to buy the form. And I'm also telling it's people that are sitting in political offices right now that are to steal as much as they can, mm -hmm. because if you only need money, to acquire public office. So this is wrong priority to our democracy. We have to ask candidates, we have very serious security problem in the country. Your ability to present a workable solution framework to this security should qualify you for the presidency. That's how you should do it. That's how you get quality. But the situation whereby in Ghana, to buy a presidential firm, you spend $2,000. In a country as large as the United States, you spend five thousand mm. dollars. How can Nigeria spend almost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to acquire a presidential firm? We are financializing the system, and this is somehow insensitive. Why? Because if you financialize a political process and financialize everything, because we have financialized healthcare in Nigeria now, mm -hmm. you go to hospital. If you don't have money, you can get treated. We financialize mm -hmm. education. We even financialize the road because if you are traveling to Kaduna, you must hire some protections to be able to go there. Mm -hmm. We financialize everything. The office that's supposed to reverse that over financialization and mm -hmm. help the society is the office that's supposed to deliver public good, which is the political public office, and it's also financialized. So what are we saying? So I believe it's a wrong priority, it encourages corruption, and I believe the party should reconsider this kind of policies going forward. Thank you. So uh, well, we've just come to about the mid uh, point of this program now. So I have other questions uh, to ask you, particularly uh, your relationship between uh, the, your relationship with other candidates within, I mean, other aspirants within your party, you know, how do you relate to, uh, uh, to them? And then maybe we can then talk specifically about some of these issues that uh, you have been working for a long time uh, uh, for Nigeria. Uh, thank you, viewers, uh, for staying with us. So far, we have been discussing with uh, Marlon Abdemugarba II, who is a presidential aspirant in the ruling All Progressive Party, APC. We're talking about the presidential race and his presidential race uh, in particular. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics on Trust TV, and we're talking about the APC presidential race with one of the uh, political aspirants in that party. You can follow us on all our social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and of course, Twitter. I am speaking with uh, Adem Muelem Ademugarba II. You know. So uh, to, to continue where we, we, we left off, do you have a meeting of 
presidential aspirants, you know, where all aspirants will come away. Maybe you have been addressed by the party or you're receiving some kinds of uh, briefings from the party or from uh, 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 other organs of the party. Does that, does that happen? And how do you relate with other aspirants during this uh, processes, if any? Yes, I think uh, that meeting is not yet. Okay. I believe until we pick the nomination forms, mm. uh, that's when the um, party okay. will now register officially mm. that you are intending to aspire mm. for the office. Uh, but uh, relating indi individually, uh, not so much. I think I was able to, by the last time we went for a dinner mm. uh, with the first lady recently, uh, I had a course to discuss with uh, Ashwa Jubala I met him, okay, you know, mm. and I wish part to his heir mm. that uh, I am Adam Ugar, but he said, hey, I know, yeah, okay. you know, I now told him that uh, I'm going to win you over in the coming primary election. <laughs> <laughs> so he now laughed and said, hey, you know, <laughs> that's interesting, you know? okay. <laughs> then uh, we just mm. laughed and I said that I will mm. want to pay him a visit. Mm. He's a party leader. He has been in democracy for a very mm. long time. Mm. He inspires us a lot mm. and it's very important for us to relate, mm. to be able to tap from his experiences. Mm. But and you just said experience of people like that aren't you? Yes, yes. You, you study it. It's very important for you mm. to keep the record. Okay. Those records uh, can be mistakes. Mm. And it's only when you know the mistakes that you can avoid them. Mm. You know, so mm. that's why when there's some people, in fact, when I met some of them, I met General IBB and we had a heart to heart conversation. I mm. met General Gusau. You can see the sincerity in their faces. Mm. And some other places where they believe, you know, that they should have done better, mm. in tr clearly trying to show you that, look, this is, avoid this and do it that way. You know, so meeting uh, people like Ashwaju will help also to, mm. to get those kind of facts. And I also uh, was able to meet Yahabi Lo. He called me mm. I, one time and I went to his uh, office and we spoke here in Abuja. Uh, on the youth agenda kind of thing. I say, yeah, you are relatively young, I'm relatively young, mm -hmm. and in this case, we connect, you know, but of course, on the concentration, let our manifestos uh, mm -hmm. um, separate us. So that's exactly what we did. I think these are the only two persons I, I mm -hmm. met so far. Oh, and, and, mm -hmm. but that, that, that's quite interesting, you yes. know. Uh, but, 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 but the other issues now yes. that people uh, are looking at, people saying that, well, in the APC, there is a silent zoning system mm. because first the president the outgoing president mm. is from a particular part of the country mm. and majority of the candidates that have indicated interest are from the opposing you know from the other side of the river mm. you know uh, niger in the country so whereas you have uh, president Buhari from northern nigeria leaving office mm -hmm. majority of the the candidates amechi or simbajo you know uh, dave umahi uh, roches okorocha uh, Tinubu, and all of these other candidates are from southern nigeria mm. you know and that it is only you uh, 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 uh second and uh, Yaya Abello, uh, Governor Abello, who mm. are from northern Nigeria, aspiring to be president under the platform of the APC so mm. far. Mm. So how do you see this working out? Is it true that there's a silent zoning system? And if it is true, how does that uh, affect your own chances? Yes, two things are here. Personally, I don't believe that in a country called Nigeria, Mm. We should have sections, okay. and that is why even when I want to went to declare for the office of the president, mm. I chose a strategic uh, position to subscribe or to symbolize mm. that particular act. I went to Katampe Mountain, mm. on top of Katampe Mountain, where Aso Radio is set. Mm. That's the center of Nigeria, mm. and that's the location to which I chose to declare for the office of the president. Mm. And I made it very clear that I am neither a candidate from the north or south or east or west but the candidate for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. And if I'm voted into office, I'm going to work for the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not any other place. And I believe deeply that candidates should be separated based on their capacity and competency to deliver, mm. not based on the regions where they come from. And we have seen the consequences of this zoning thing. As long as we keep zoning, we keep polarizing our political settings in Nigeria. Zoning to the southwest brought about the same OPC crisis I talked about. We zoned back to the north, we had Boko Haram. We zoned back to the south side, we had militants. Yeah. What's the connection we between back... APC and zoning and Boko Haram and zoning? It's always like that. In fact, okay. once you zone, like the reason why President Muhammadu Buhari's zone 
is affected by these things is because most likely some political actors are instigating this you know, similar to the way it was instigated for the previous presidents. Mm -hmm. So the connection between the security and politics in Nigeria is very much intertwined. Mm -hmm. So this zoning is a serious thing because some political mm -hmm. um, um, entrepreneurs, or maybe I can say violence entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. lot to take opportunity of this to negotiate for this political power. So the more they keep this violence, the more the government is hated, and the more they justify that they should come to their zone. And this is just the whole game that is playing. Mm -hmm. So until we depoliticize this zoning thing, we allow people to go and present themselves, it won't be good. And we are practicing democracy. Mm -hmm. And democracy is a government of the majority. It has nothing to do with the zone you come from. Where majority cast their vote, there should have political power. So that's actually what I believe. If I come from, if I come back, like coming back to our local realities based on what you explain. If I explain, take these local realities and say that maybe I'm coming from the south, and the major voters are coming from the north. Of course, the person that comes from the north, if the major voters feel like is the one they should vote for, they should vote for. Yeah. It happens all over the country. It's just game of the majority. Yeah. If you go back to even the United States where we copy our democracy from, I think the only southern president among all the presidents they have, about 47 presidents, yeah. the only one that come directly from the south, I think is Jimmy Carter, mm. and um, the one the president that I, I think Woodrow Wilson. Mm. You know, those are the only ones that come from the south. Almost all of them are coming from the zones of the majority. So this is the way democracy is being practiced, and we should allow democracy to take its shape. Mm. But that, 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 that's an opinion. Yes. Right? Isn't it? It's not a party position. Yes. So how and it's we don't know to what extent it will influence yes. your party's party, position. Yes, yes. Because the know. truth of the matter mm -hmm. is party have no zoning. APC is okay. not going to honor zoning at all. Mm -hmm. APC is going to, based on all my consultations that I know of, APC is going to try to win 2023 election. Mm -hmm. And APC cannot risk winning 2023 election. And the moment APC makes a mistake of picking somebody that is not sellable, then APC will lose that election. Mm -hmm. But and does that sure mean that because you have candidates, more candidates from the south, yes. you know, than candidates from the north, isn't that by implication some kind of zoning? Regardless, it doesn't have to be written. It doesn't have to be coded. Yes, it yes, can yes. be based is, on convention. It, it can even just, be it, mm. based on an unspoken agreement. No, it's, it is. It is just a kind of sense of entitlement okay. that that produce this mm. southern um, demand mm. for the presidency, mm. because uh, they felt like okay, since we have a president from the north that have done this for eight years then by default it should come from the south. Mm -hmm. Just feeling of entitled that we are now entitled to the presidency. Not that we are qualified, not that we have, we are, how we do have you capacity explain? to win, mm. to win the political mm. power by convincing the general public to vote for mm. us, but just by the fact that we come from the south, then we are entitled to it. And this is very wrong, mm. very wrong. In but how do, you explain that? how do you explain the situation where in the APC, you don't. You have virtually just two of you. Yes. Uh, northern candidates. Yes. But whereas in the PDP, you have quite many of them. Uh, Aminu Tembuol, mm. uh, former Vice President uh, Atiku Abakar, mm. uh, Bukula Saraki, uh, Balaya Muhammad, you know, and 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 and, and uh, Hayati Din mm. also, and several others from the north who are coming out to vie for the office of the president under the PDP. But in the APC. There's just you and uh, how do you explain that uh, when you look at in our, relation to zoning? When you look at our major political actors uh, from northern Nigeria, mm. uh, especially in the APC, this is the first time that APC is establishing a block of political power mm. in the north. And I, then it used to be PDP. Mm. And most of them are, are just like finishing their eight years, especially the governors and co. Uh, some have done best. Some have not. Mm. Those that have not done this, maybe they feel like if they offer themselves, they may lose the election, so they're not trying. Mm. Those that have done their best, they feel like they are tired. Some feel like they want to come to the Senate. It's all about choice. Some mm. feel like they are too old, 60, 60 something years, they want to rest. So all those things are the factors that are summing up. Mm. But and if you look at the, the two of us that are contesting from the North, for instance, we are relatively mm. young people. We believe in the future, and mm. we believe in the APC and the program so far. Although we don't personally, I don't agree that there is any strong legacy mm. that we need to carry forward in 2023. Mm. I believe that we should say bye bye from the past and create mm. a vision that will replace that experience that has failed us completely. Mm. So uh, it means that uh, 
the new or young demography in the north is what is interested in becoming the president, mm -hmm. as opposed to what is coming from the, the south, one. that they are older mm -hmm. demography. So uh, I believe it does have to do with age. Maybe some of our elders have, are tired. They don't, mm -hmm. they just don't want the seat, and we want it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So but the, 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 let's go down to your program now. Yeah. Uh, to sell to APC, but also to Nigerians, you know. The, 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 in 2015, the APC ran and won the election on a mantra of change. And they wanted to change, in particular, the security situation in the country, but also the economic situation in the country. And somehow there is a connection between these two. So maybe we can limit our discussion of your program to just these two, two mm. issues. So how would your, your security... What's your security plan, and how is it different from what we have currently, if uh, we have any currently? Yes, you see, uh, I initially I discussed about um, security and politics in Nigeria mm -hmm. usually are intertwined. Wherever you see insecurity, mm -hmm. when you deep dive, you will see that there is a political influence over this Somewhere. insecurity. Mm -hmm. So it, the dichotomy between the politics and security is where we keep having problems. The gap between them is what keeps enlarging the insecurity and also give giving political advantage or disadvantages. So what we intend to do is to create a council, and that council is going to fuse both the political and security actors in that place. We call it Council for Political and Security Affairs, mm -hmm. similar to the way we have Federal Executive Council. Mm -hmm. We intend to jettison that Federal Executive Council and build two councils. Mm -hmm. So one of the councils is this Council for Security and Political Affairs. Mm -hmm. And inside that council, we are going to mainstream all the 350 ethnic groups into that council through their traditional rulers. Mm -hmm. It is at that point that you have the security architecture of the country interfacing directly with the political actors in the country while also having direct intelligence from the local mm. traditional authorities. That's how you isolate most of the problems. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is not the only country that faces these kind of challenges. India had similar problems, you know, some times back. Saudi Arabia was worse because it's like a bandit country, different tribes, about 42, killing and maiming and plundering. Mm -hmm. before the um, Abdul, uh, bin Abdul, Abdulaziz bin Saud, Saud. took mm -hmm. over. And when he took over, they arranged this kind of arrangement. And Saudi mm -hmm. became the most stable, peaceful country mm -hmm. in Arabian Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Similarly, when you go back to countries like Russia, they were like that, especially during the fall of the USSR. Everywhere mm -hmm. was just trekking away. And they decided to expand the quality of the Duma, mm -hmm. created structural arrangement within the Duma mm -hmm. that makes people to be feeling inclusive. Because... Major problems that we face in our security issues have to do with the social injustices mm -hmm. that have manifested over time, unattended to, that now boomerang into the situations we are facing today. So that's why we believe Council for, for Security and Political Affairs is an avenue where these things can be discussed properly. It's an avenue where we discuss our Biafra challenges. Mm -hmm. So what uh, will be the constitutional or legal basis for such a council? Are definitely, to... yeah, definitely mm -hmm. we will need some amendment that we need to push because okay. it's going to be standard council that's supposed to be meeting quarterly. Mm -hmm. You know, every quarter we sit and discuss. If there's an issue, for instance, in Zamfara, mm -hmm. Zamfara state security crisis, um, if you follow through Turuji's comments, mm -hmm. he always talk about Shinkafi. So it means that his principal action areas or geography mm -hmm. was Shinkafi. Mm -hmm. So supposing that at that time, the police commissioner of that area, the DSS director in Zamfara State, the DPO in that area, the traditional rulers in that area, and the Hakimites of that area mm -hmm. were able to come together with the Arnos of that area, mm -hmm. the problem would have been sorted. When you bring in the maybe the reps and the Senate representing those areas, maybe the issue is an appropriation issue. They stole your cows, you appropriate and then bring them back and pay them back. Mm. You know, or maybe there is a destruction that happened. You find a way to create a situation to solve it at the micro level. Mm. But because of total abstinence from political will mm. to security action, time action, mm. to also traditional authority that is feeling completely abandoned in the whole scheme of things, mm. we now have it almost to the full scale insurgency. Mm. So this is the way you address security challenges mm. in a complex country like Nigeria. You must create an avenue where people can be there to discuss their sincere grievances where there's any, mm. and discuss it's possible solutions their way. Mm. So you. that's exactly but, what we're looking but, at. But, 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 it's, it's certainly interesting to yeah. find a presidential candidate or a presidential aspirant, you know, uh, in, 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 in Nigeria, thinking about bringing traditional rulers into the constitutional order because they are currently outside 
of the constitutional order. It's it's, it's certainly interesting in 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 its own right, you know. But how practicable and applicable is this? Because it's always one thing to have an idea good mm. on paper, mm. and then it's another thing to deliver it because then you will now have to uh, speak with uh, the senators, you know, when two-thirds majority and then two-thirds of majority of the states, houses of assemblies, you know, and, 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 and so on. How does that, uh, uh, how do you, how, because governors are enjoying their power right yes, now, yes. you know, and they would not want any part of it whittled down. The power that they have over traditional rulers is one of the maybe because it gives them patronage, you know, quite a lot to dispense, you know, and 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 so on. So how are you going to get governors to cooperate and deliver uh, such a new constitutional order for the country? Two things: mm. one, the council is going to be established based on executive order. Mm. There will be executive order that will be issued establishing the council mm. as a matter of emergency and exigencies of the moment. Mm. We have a crisis and mm. we have to address this crisis quickly mm. and therefore the president will issue an executive order to convene this council to begin to discuss these things. Mm. The outcome of this order will determine, will convince even the governors about the substance of mm. the positivities that will be recorded. One. While we convene the executive order, we make it, we enforce the mm. constitutional autonomy of the local governments mm. so that each of the local government council can operate autonomously away from the strangulation of the, the governments mm. so that they can have their own economic arrangement and security arrangement that fits their people. The same way we re-architect the country into this 774. Mm. Let them function as independent units so the resources can flow down to the baseline. Mm. So when you have the baseline enforced to be able to operate autonomously, mm. and you have a council that is enacted based on executive order, mm. it means that you are creating a loop. So either the governors fuse in mm. and get to play a part, or they will become excluded by this new fusion between local and federal government, mm. since the traditional rulers are under the local government councils. Mm. So this is the way we intend to practicalize it. So under the executive order can come, you know, in the first uh, one week of the presidency. Interesting. So, but, but, but what about the economy? Because this, the, the 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 challenge of the economy, and just maybe to to one, we have just about three four minutes uh, uh, to pass yes. uh, for the end of the program. So, economic. It's one of the issues that EP APC talked about. We're going mm. to create 20 million uh, new jobs. We're going to create <laughs> 10 million new jobs and, mm. and, 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 and so on. So we're not going to ask how many jobs have you created because you're part of the APC. How many jobs so you share collective responsibility for that failure? But how are you going to do something different? Everything has to be looked at around job creation. In fact, in our policy, we also have another council. We call it Council for Economic Planning and Development. That's the second council that mm. will be existing. In that, we tie almost every economic activity to job creation. Mm. First, we attack a monster, and that monster is inflation. It has to die. Mm. Therefore, we come with something called Project 666, 6% 6 inflation. So a CBN governor will be hired to ensure this 666 are enforced. First, the inflation has to drop to 6%. Mm. Second, you now have our GDP must grow by 6%. Mm. Third, the, ex the exchange rate, that the value for money, like uh, interest rate, must not be above 6%. That's mm. the 666. Mm. So, so that bankers can lend money out, economy can grow, and inflation can drop. Mm. And how are we going to do that? Simple. All the monies we are getting from the CBN will have to be channeled towards infrastructure investment. Mm. How you tackle inflation is building infrastructure that will bridge supply lines between buyers and sellers in the economy. Mm. When it's easy for goods and services to move, it will be cheaper. You have access to cheaper energy, you have access to cheaper transportation, you have access to cheaper, cheaper supply chain angles, you find out that goods and services will now come lower and people will have more to save in their pockets. Mm. Imagine if we dredge River Niger and River Benue. Mm. When you dredge these places and you begin to traverse goods that are coming direct from Atlantic Ocean into the hinterland, mm. you are going to reduce transportation costs by a factor of eight because it's eight times mm. to transport on water 
than on land. Cheaper. That is mm. why, at times cheaper, yes, mm. to transport is cheaper. That is why United States become richer because of greater Mississippi River. Mm. That is why Europe becomes so integrated because of greater Danube River. Mm. That is why China becomes very strategic because of its Yalu River. Mm. So, and almost all the countries, that is even what gives Egypt what it is because of Nile. You know, so when you look at these things, even mm. the war that is happening between Russia and Ukraine today, mm. one of the strategic objective was the Dnieper River mm. that originates from Kiev and then travels within the Russian shores. Mm. So we need to leverage on this bigger mm. opportunity mm. because the river system is very important and that is why even Nigeria is named after mm. that river Niger. Thank so you. we dredge that again. Mm. We tackle inflation, we tackle infrastructure investment, we go back to our economic policy like job creation, there is something we call farm to factory. Whatever we produce in the farms does not get to our stomach directly. It has to pass through packaging, processing, packaging, wholesaling, retailing, along the value chain you create jobs. And we have crop choices, there are some crops that create more jobs, like cotton. Like granot, yeah. like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's time. Yeah, right? it's, 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 it's quite interesting <laughs> to hear you say this, and we hope that other political uh, aspirants and and, and uh, maybe as we go on to time, candidates will also be able to speak and address issues that uh, matter to Nigerians in with the passion and dedication that uh, you are doing. But just before we go, uh, what do you have a plan B? Because. Suppose you don't win the primaries. What's going to happen? Um, suppose I, I, don't, I don't want to assume I will not win the primaries because okay. I know that I'm the best candidate uh, APC is going to produce. Mm. And if I did not win the primary, I will ensure that APC win the general election. Okay. Thank you very much. It's been uh, an interesting day having you here. And we hope to have you once again as the primary season and even the general election season uh, proceed further. It's been, uh, thank you for coming here. Thank, thank you, you also, me. Nigerians, for staying with us. So far, we've been discussing with uh, one of the not-so-new faces because he was a candidate in 2019 as well, but certainly one of the refreshing faces in the 2023 elections. We promised that we'll always bring you discussions and insightful ideas like this, and gradually, we hope that we'll get there. Stay with us. Tomorrow when we meet, we'll bring you another guest and another issue about Nigerian politics, policy, and governance. Suleiman, Suleiman. Bye-bye.